Today on Zoom. Ah. And what's my problem? The pack of jelly beans raced from house to house. Oh, Jared. Yes. Hey, Zoe. Oh, Jared. Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future, and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by viewers like you. Time. Time drag. Time flies. It's too late. It's never too late. Time is on our side. No, it isn't. It's the right time. It's the wrong time. Even a broken watch is right twice a day. And do you know what else? What? It's time for Zoom. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Let's go. <laughs> was sent to us by Thompson T. of Mesquite, Texas. All right, guys. Ready? Set. Go. See, look what you really do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at Jared. Look at Jared. Lady oh. Jared is Savile Denise. And what's my problem? <laughs> oh, I'm oh, big! I I'm big in the face! <laughs> <laughs> so who's in the lead? Zoe? Zoe. Zoe. Well, it's, it is, but it's not making mm -hmm. it. Imagine mm -hmm. done the lead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the last person who did the biggest battle wins. Oh, 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 Lisa. Okay, keep that beer. <laughs> I know how to get it out. Ew! Ew! Look at that guy go. <laughs> hey, she put a hole in it. It's I'm sagging. <laughs> 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 All right, all right, here we go. This one is no. going to be a winner. Yeah, he's like... Welcome to Cafe Zoom. This recipe was sent in by Stephen C. of Savannah, Georgia, and David T. of Littleton, Massachusetts. It's called Banana on a Stick, and here's how you make it. What you need are bananas. Make sure they're not mushy. A bag of chocolate chips. Yum. A bowl. Some popsicle sticks. A plate and wax paper. First, take your banana and cut off the ends. Then, with the peel still on, cut it in half. This helps because the popsicle sticks don't slide around that much. Then, put your popsicle sticks through the bottom. Then, peel the bananas. Now, 
Now you need a way to melt your chocolate. You can use a microwave or a stove. A 12 ounce bag of chocolate chips is enough to make eight bananas on a stick. When you use a microwave, make sure you have a microwave safe bowl, not metal. Melt the chocolate, stirring constantly. Then, dip the banana in, using the spoon to help you cover them. I don't like to use too much chocolate because it's hard to bite through. If your banana cracks or is very loose on the stick, don't worry because the freezer will help you out with that problem later. When you're done coating them, put them in the freezer until they're firm on the stick. This should take about two hours. When they're done, take them out of the freezer. Voila, you have a chocolate covered banana snack. We decorated this one. Isn't he cute? Havai, Dabi Saba Spava, Daba Zabum Dabog. Dabon Spaba Dabon. Gobud Baboy. Hobby's Baba Rabbi Abu Babi Dabian. Baba Wubber Stowell Trubbin Abing Habim. Abo Spaba Nabo Abu. Abo Grubby. Dear Zoom, here's a challenge for you. Make a tower that can hold a golf ball at the top out of 10 pieces of newspaper and 50 centimeters of tape. You can't tape the tower to the table to help it stand. It's really neat the way it stands, and it's fun to build. Matt B., Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. P.S. I learned that you can't just fold it over the same way or it will fall. All right, let's do it. We want to make the base first. Or yeah, you should probably. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ah. Pablo? Yes. The foundation is the most important part. Right. Like that. And then have it stand. And then just uh, make a hole? Yeah. Not tape this to this. Can't use that much, we only have 50 centimeters. Could you rip me off a tiny, tiny piece just so I can... So it will hold the golf ball like this. Right. See? Bravo. I don't know how to rip the middle. <laughs> All right, let's... There. Oh, man. Ah. Yummy. Can I just see if it'll fit in? I know where we need the extra 10. What would happen if we just build, like, little kind of things that go up like that and, and support it. Because I mean, we have little pieces little of paper. <laughs> there we go. Check this out. And if we have like three of those, one here, one here, and one there, it'll hold it up. Like this? Yeah. Let's see if it works. <laughs> I got it. Keep working. All right. Let's try rolling it into cylinders. Yeah, put it there. Right here? Yeah. Or wait, let's... No, no, put it here. It falls more this way. All right, hold on. All right, hold it right there. There we go. Ding, ding, ding! We have a winner. I think we can go higher. What do you think of fall? There's only one way to find out. First, let's measure this thing. See how yeah. far we went. 
That is exactly one meter. Whoa. Right, make it one and a half. You can squeeze the bottom like this. Yeah, there you go. All right. Hmm. Get me my ruler. One meter at that line. That is 132, I believe. More? Go ahead, roll it up. You're a genius, you know that? Well, you know. All right. Ooh, wait, hold on. Oh, stay! <laughs> ah. 132. If we had more tape, maybe. Ugh. Because we could have made another support. 132 is not bad. Yeah, we did pretty good. <sighs> nice working with Thank you. Thank you. Newspaper isn't usually a very strong building material, but when we rolled it into a cylinder, it was strong enough to support the golf ball. To go higher, we built triangle supports on the side. They kept the cylinders from tipping over. Try it at home and see how tall you can build your tower. Yeah, Keiko? Why don't cows have any money? I don't know. Because the farmers milk them dry! <laughs> Good one. <laughs> this game was sent to us by Niven M. of Oak Park, Michigan. First, take a piece of paper and make 25 dots. Each player takes turns drawing lines, trying to make boxes. The player who closes a box gets to write his initial inside the box, plus gets into the turn. Whoever has the most boxes wins. All right, Keiko, you start. OK. As usual. Indeedy. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> hit. <laughs> Starting a new one. Please. <laughs> no. Okay. <gasps> oh, box, I get a box, that? I got a oh. box. <sighs> okay, my turn. Yes, um, find me, dog. No. All right, good girl. I got a box. Oh, whoop de do. Oh, I got another box. I can't believe <laughs> this. Oh. I got another box. Okay. No, no, my turn. I got him. Oh, I almost got him. I got a box. <laughs> <sighs> okay, you got another box. The Keiko Corporation. <laughs> oh, that was so dumb. Thank you <laughs> very much, finally. Thank you very much again. And thank you very much again. And then thank you very much again. And uh Aha, ha ha. Um, Hoo -hoo. Mm, okay, right here. No, nope, that's not a box. That's not a box. <gasps> No, oh, now I get a box. And oh, I get another box. I ah. get another box. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Keiko gets the closing box. Okay, let's count up how many All boxes right. we have. Okay, then I'll count first. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, Keiko is the winner. Do you have any games you like to play? If you do, send them to Zoom. Hey, Zoe. Hey. What do you call a blindfolded dinosaur? I don't know. And 
I don't think he saw us. <laughs> My name is Audrey and I'm 11 years old. I've been dancing with the National Dance Institute for two and a half years. Each Saturday we meet at 9.45 and we practice for about five hours. We are rehearsing the subway piece for our year-end performance, which this year is called City City. pieces about the New York City subway and things that could happen when you're on the subway. Cut. Group, it's so confusing. I can't see what they are doing because you're taking too long to, to go down. We usually just polish all the steps until they're really perfect. I think dance is really someone's mood or how someone is feeling, whoever choreographs or dances the dance. If they're really happy, they'll make it an upbeat dance. It could be a mix of everything. Dancing across the stage, my face lights up, I'm just so happy and full of energy. In the subway piece, I don't have the lead. I'm in the chorus. My best friend Talia has the lead. I really think she's a great dancer, and she thinks I'm a great dancer. Go in first. Now the group. Different people need to get different parts sometimes. dance because it makes me feel great. Dance is a sort of communication that lets me express myself without talking. The National Dance Institute is one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I think it's made me appreciate dance more. I think that that is the kind of thing that's going to stay with me for all my life. Oye, envíanos tus poemas, juegos, zingers, chistes, recetas y otras cosas para hacer y te enviaremos un ejemplar de Zoomerang. Si ya nos enviaste algo, gracias. I used to have these friends and they used to leave me out a lot. I don't know, it made me feel like they didn't like me as much and I just felt so uncomfortable around them for a while because I always tried to like act different than I was but then I realized that I shouldn't be doing that I should be who I am and then I, now I have friends and they and they're nice to me they don't leave me out and I can be the person that I am that's cool Did any of you have any leave out stories like you know how kids when they have little brothers and little sisters they feel kind of left out yeah yeah. They get all the attention. yeah the little brother gets all the attention like my little brother and my stepbrother and my father will be going on a trip and I might not be able to go. But if my little brother doesn't go, then I really won't care. Sometimes can. you get left out because of ages. Like, um, like my brother may be going to Russia to visit again. My mom doesn't think that I should go because they all speak Russian and I'm not too fluent in it anymore. Mm -hmm. So she thinks I should wait until I grow up a little to go. Uh -huh. So sometimes you feel left out because of your age. And sometimes I feel left out because, like, on Mother's Day, <laughs> We, my mother said that we were going to spend the day together, but we didn't really do anything. And like at the end of the day, she went out with somebody else. Oh. And I had to go stay with my father. Oh, on Mother's Day? That's not fun. If you go to a new school yeah. or something, and, and like you everybody only have a few friends. friends, and then there's all these other kids that know each other, uh -huh. I mean, it's not the same, but it's still feeling left out. Last year when I was in school, there was this new kid who came and he caught on so quickly. You know, he was like the hot kid all of a sudden. Like, everybody was trying to be friends with him and all that. So 
Sometimes that's yeah, not that true. I'm just saying. I know in my school there are some some girls and some guys who are just like made fun of all the time and are always left out. I always try and picture myself in their shoes and realize that it must be really hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, that they don't have a lot of friends, that they're always made fun of. Mm -hmm. So I'm always trying to convince my friends that like like you should like ease up on them a little bit because I mean, imagine if that was you. Psst, Pablo. Yeah? What kind of shoes do spies wear? I don't know. Sneakers. <laughs> A girl named A.T. nominated the Jason C. of Newburgh, Indiana for today's Zuma Cum Laude. Jason started a kids' newspaper that now has subscribers in more than 25 states and four countries. Because Jason's grandmother died of cancer and he wants to work towards curing this disease, all the money he makes from the newspaper goes to cancer research. Congratulations! You'll be receiving your Zuma Cum Laude certificate in the mail. Congratulations! Aaron F. of Bozeman, Montana, sent us a question that we need your help to answer. He wanted to know if there are more people who could roll their tongues or more people that can't. All the Zoomers can roll their tongues. Can you? Count how many of your friends and relatives can roll their tongues, and how many can't. And send your results to Zoom, Box 350, Boston, Mass, 02134. Or visit our website and email your results to us. We'll share them later on the show. Zoom Tail. Jelly Beans Escape, a half story. Written and illustrated by Robert G. of Walnut Creek, California. Don't open that jar, I yelled. But my half-witted brother, Daniel, didn't listen to me. Like a runaway rainbow, jelly beans came alive, flying from the half-open jar, spilling onto the floor. They knocked over the television, breaking it in half. They flushed half of the silverware down the toilet. In half a minute, the insane jelly beans wiped a half-eaten egg salad sandwich all over the floor and painted the walls with half-year-old strawberry jelly. Soon, everyone in our family was running for their lives. It's all your fault, I screamed. The pack of jelly beans split in half and raced from house to house, causing panic. In Mr. and Mrs. Jones's house, they threw Tutu, the Jones's cat, into the tub and filled it half full of hot water. Mrs. Jones, only half awake from her nap, pulled the half-drowned cat from the water. The jelly beans invaded Mr. and Mrs. Bubbles' house and crashed their car like a half-crazed rhino through the living room, up the stairs, and into the bedroom. The front half of the car ended up under the bed. The Bubbles and all the neighbors fled their half-destroyed houses at 100 miles per hour. The jelly beans had to be stopped or... Stop! In the name of the Chocolate Candy Police Force, I arrest you for cutting this story in half. Dedicated to my teachers and my mother. The end. Today we're going to play as Jelly Bean Transfer, sent in by Melissa P. of New Rochelle, New York. To play, all you do is transfer jelly beans from one bowl to another. But you have to use a spoon in your mouth. No hands allowed. All right, you ready, Zoe? Uh-huh. Okay, on your mark. Get set, go! Come on, you guys. Okay, come on, come on, Zoe, Zoe. Zoe. Oh, are you doing? Oh, Come on, Jerry. 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 Come on,
Make friends with the amazing creatures at Animal Junction on Zaboomafoo. Next, here on WQED 13.